Welcome to Shorty Supercoach. What's going on, guys? Hawthorne preview coming your way. We've got a bit to talk about with the Hawks as well. There's quite a few players, as you can see, running across the screen that I wouldn't mind talking about today. So we'll get to those in a second. But um, I forgot to tell you a little bit of a story um, from New Year's Eve, which was nothing crazy, but, gee, it had me rattled for about 10 minutes. We went and watched these fireworks we walked up this school. It was kind of on a hill. You can see this fireworks real nicely. Great. Anyway, I'd, I'd have my phone in one pocket, wallet in the other, all night, just in case we went out, just in case I needed the old wallet. And, um, you know, we're a few drinks deep by this point. Watch the fireworks. Great. We've walked a fair way. We walk a bit back. What a great night. Awesome stuff. Let's wind this up and, you know, see what's going on. Phone. Fuck, where's my wallet? Oh shit, wallet's not in my pocket. When was the last time I had it? I definitely had it halfway on the walk because I remember... T- oh, shit. So all of a sudden I've like flipped out of drunk mode and gone full sober mode. You know when like something crazy happens and you got to sober up immediately? And here I am just at like quarter past 12 on New Year's Day. Just like with a fucking phone torchlight going around this school. Must look like an absolute freak. And I'm, we probably walked five, ten minutes. Maybe, yeah, not wasn't that long, but I'm like, at what point did it fall out? So I'm like retracing my steps, scouring it, and, and I couldn't find it. And I'm, I'm on the walk home. I'm like, oh, God. I mean, this has been a good night, but now I've got to wake up and cancel all my cards. This is so inconvenient. Oh, God. And what if, what if someone picks it up? Oh, my God. All the shit I'm going to have to replace. And I get back and I'm like, I lost my wallet. They're like, oh, you're kidding me. You couldn't have. Where is it? And uh, about a minute of um, hustle and bustle and fanfare, it was uh, under the seat I was sitting on. So always uh, always look close, kids. Don't just jump to conclusions. Just slipped out of my pocket down the side of the chair. So happens to the best of us. But... Um, yeah, just wanted to let you guys in on that one. You know, I love to tell a bit of a story. And a um, oh, quick question as well. would love to get your feedback. Just had a shower. Now, I'm not going to take this anywhere filthy. You guys don't want to know about shorty showering habits. But showering in the dark. Thoughts? Have you done it? What do you think? It's been a, It's been something I've adopted over the last three to four months. And I'm telling you, if you haven't done it, it's about time you do. I'm not telling you, I'm not telling you how to shower, but look, just get in there one night and turn the lights off. Just see what it does for you. I'm telling you, it's it's a different vibe. It's it's something else for the senses. You know, you you just you're just a bloke in darkness with a whole heap of hot water running onto his back. It's something else. I'm telling you. So give me a feedback on that. I mean, a. Am I the only weirdo that showers in the dark? Although one of my friends does it as well. So, or, or two, if you haven't done it, let me know your thoughts. Are you willing to try it? Am I just a nutcase? Get back to me. Get back to me on that. But don't knock it till you try it. Do not knock it till you try it, guys. But um, let's straighten things up, shall we? Let's talk a bit of super coach. Hawthorne. Now... A bit of change at the Hawks. I mean, it doesn't hurt me too much to see the Hawks struggling. Don't hate it as a Cats fan, but there is a fair bit of opportunity for youngsters as this side goes through a rebuild. And look at some of those exits. O'Meara, Mitchell and Gunston. Massive amount of experience going out the door there. But that's the way Mitchell's approaching it. You know, he wants to rebuild and they are really in the heavy stages of this. You know, that transition process. And... A few young guys came in, and we'll definitely talk about them, but I just want to start with what we know. You know, let's start with James Sicily and what a player he is and what a year he had. A bit of a slowish start, but, gee, once he got going. I remember it was the... Ah, why did it just go night mode? I fucking thought I fixed it. Anyway, you know, you talk about showers in the dark, all of a sudden your laptop goes dark. I I thought I fixed this before. Fuck, man. If any tech, ah, fuck! If any tech wizards are out there, 
oh, seriously, I was just scrolling before and it just switched modes. I don't like it. Anyway, we'll, we'll work with it and I'll do some YouTube tutorials. Oh, Shorty's tech is not where it's at. But like I said, his first month was was okay, but nothing amazing. And I think a few of us weren't too sure if we could trust him because he was coming off, um, you know, 11 games, average of 102 in 2020, and then he missed 2021. So he was at a nice price last year, but not all of us jumped on board. But I tell you what, it didn't take long for us to jump on board because this hot patch particularly, I mean, for most of the year, let's be honest, but absolute heat from round four to round 11 in particular made him an absolute must-have. And he is that once again. You know, you will pay top dollar, but they're the best premium defenders you can possibly ask for. The Tom Stewart's, James Sicily's, they are good kicks and their team likes the ball in their hand, plus they're going to get heaps of intercepts, plus they'll take some kick-ins. And Sicily is all of that. So we're paying a hell of a lot more now than we did last year, but you know what you're going to get. So I think one of he or Stewart definitely belongs in your back six and maybe both if you want to splash some cash. So there's really no need to talk too much more about Sicily. He's um, quickly become one of the best players in the Hawks side and, and such a damaging defender in the comp. Now, Cooper Stevens, I really want to talk about I think he will relish this opportunity. Geelong had an amazing um, trade period, but this was the one downside, really. Losing Cooper Stevens, something had to give. Of course, I understand that, but um, this fella hasn't played much footy, but I think he will get the chance to play a bit of footy. I think um, I think last time when I was looking at this, the bloody um, prices, my eyes just eluded me. And I think I said he was 365. Pretty sure he's, um, my typing's eluding me. Uh, he is, oh, fuck, for a sec, I thought. For a sec, I'm losing the plot here. I'm losing the plot. I'm, I'm searching up in 2022, bro. <sighs> Give me one moment. Technology is my strong suit. How are we going for time? Just just loading. <laughs> Give me a minute. Um, I think he's 265 or something like that. 265. So definitely huge upside. He'll get opportunity at the Hawks. It'll be so interesting to see how he goes through the preseason because if he has a good preseason, a few good pracky games, there's every chance he could be a centre bouncer tender for the Hawks. You know, he's a, if you don't know much about him, he's a big bodied mid and a guy that, is so strong through the hips and the core. The game against the Dogs that he played for the Cats in round 12, I watched it the other day and didn't do anything crazy, like just had the nine touches. But you can just see it. He's so young, but he's strong in the body. You can just tell he's only going to get better at that. He's going to be a clearance king. And I, I could see him really just filling that void that Mitchell and O'Meara left. Obviously not to that level, but I think they'll place a fair bit of faith in him to do that kind of a role so in terms of low-end value players he's almost as good as we're going to get in terms of this stage of the year of course a lot has to happen for him to get best 22 get opportunity a lot can change but in terms of prospect and and the way i see it i'm a massive fan of this kid he's only got seven games next to his name but he's basically 22 and he's former first round pick He's definitely a guy that could go bang. And with the right role and the opportunity and a bit of faith placed him at a new club that, that is developing, he could really be a quality player. So there's a few other guys that could put their hand up for those type of minutes, which we'll touch on throughout the video. But Cooper Stevens at this point is one of the more exciting prospects for mine in terms of value and cash cow, as well as being an okay scorer that you can be at M7 or M8. So keep him definitely on your watch list through the preseason another guy i wanted to talk about who is new to the club and that's lloyd meek now much like stevens i think he could get some serious opportunity at the hawks what does that number one ruck role look like for them there's a bit bit of change um you know, a few younger rucks that will be hoping to make that position their own but if meek can make the number one rock spot his own 
there's some serious scoring potential. And what I like with Meek is that we know he can score if he gets the opportunity. You know, he's shown it. He's shown it very comfortably to, to score 80s consistently. What I don't like about Meek is the super awkward price that we find him at. Um, you know, what's that, 430? Like, that's just awkward, mate. Super awkward. So I'm not going to spend too much time on him because I don't see us picking him just because of that awkward price tag. But given the right role, an average in the 90s is very possible, I feel. I mean, that might sound a bit crazy, but he's basically done it. Small sample size, I know. But he's averaged 87. He'll get better opportunity. He's got another preseason under his belt. He's been a project player, but he's now in that real prime of his career as a ruckman. That window for rucks of their best footy almost starts at 25, and he's right there. He reminds me a, a little bit of like Sean Darcy vibes, which was a bit ironic because they were in the same team. Good follow-up players, but big body types. Now, I think if Meek can get an opportunity as the main man in the ruck division for the Hawks, anything's possible. I don't have a super close read on where it's all at. I mean, obviously, Lynch is a guy that we were talking about this stage last year. So there'll be a vying for the ruck position, um, but a bit of a changing of the guard in terms of that ruck spot for the Hawks. So doubt we'll pick him in classic, but this guy could be a sneaky one that you just pick late in your draft and all your mates are like, shit, right, I forgot about him. But I think he's unders without offering enough value in classic. But gee, handy option when it comes to draft. Keep him under your hat, ladies and gentlemen. James Warple. Again, super weird price, you know, it's awkward, but he, but he's worth mentioning. You know, for him, it's a pretty reasonable price because he is the sort of guy that as soon as Mitchell or Amir or someone comes into the side or returns from injury, he gets pushed out. And he got pushed out something shock in the last couple of years. But we've seen him in 2019 average 97, 22 games. And at that stage of his career, he looked like... You know, I'm a mainstay in the Hawks midfield. Things have changed. He's been hit by injury. Um, now, he has his limitations. There's no doubt about that. He's probably not the sharpest ball user. He's a little bit one-dimensional. You know, he's not the quickest bloke. But what he does do well is find the footy and clearance work. Um, and I think I mentioned Stevens. Well, Warple's the sort of same character who will be looking to find many more midfield minutes that have been opened up by the... Um, departure of a couple of stars so look 300k in the midfield I, I don't see us picking him but if he is a regular fixture in that engine room for Hawthorne there's no reason he doesn't average 85 minimum so um, but but just as equally he could continue to be on the out as they um, provide more opportunities to Connor Nash or Josh Ward or Connor McDonald or you know, Will Day, Dylan Moore, Cooper Stevens. So it'll just depend whether they say, look, you have your limits, but we like what you do, go and do it. Or does he just continue to play? Because we haven't seen his best footy for many years. Is that opportunity or is or is this just his lot in life now? So it'll be really interesting to see. Again, not going to spend a stack of time on him because the price makes him a little iffy, but definitely worth a mention. I did touch on his name before, Will Day. Oh, super tempting prospect, this fella. Now, 360, down back. We've seen him do some special stuff already. I mean, there's a YouTube video of him just carving it up and, and just the run and carry and the pace and the the dare that he shows is is so good for such a young guy. He's, he's just, there's a bit of Isaac Smith about him, the way he covers the ground. Like, you know, he just lopes around, but... But he's better than Isaac Smith. And I say that respectfully. I mean, Will Day has been here five minutes and Smith is a decorated player. But I feel like Will Day could be a superstar. Will we see it this year? I, I don't know. But, you know, the start to the year, I think we might have saw it the other year, I must admit. Um, I think it might have been 21 that we saw him. Yeah, burst on the scene with that 122 and then he got hit with injury and it was just an injury-affected year. And... And I can't say that I saw plenty of Hawks footy last year, so there'd be others that could comment better on his last year, but I think he played 
a range of positions in what was an interrupted year as well. You can see he missed the first couple. Um, he misses, you know, a few... Oh, no, he's pretty consistent after a bit of an injury start to the year. But, you know, he, he certainly shows enough potential and promise. You'd have to be pretty gutsy to pick him. It's one of those selections where if it comes off, oh, you're walking around seven feet tall, you got your chest out, you're going to the mates, hey, fucking told you, will day. Have a look at him, turned up again. But if it goes wrong, which so often these breakout players can, you're really left with a, a really awkward situation of he's at a weird-ass price, you could have spent the money elsewhere, he's not going to be a keeper, because that's sort of, at that price, you really need him to start the year well, and and there's just a lot of pressure on these types of selections when you make them, because they got to start the year well, they've got to have that immediate impact, because if you pick a bloke that you need to break out, you're just hyper-focused on him, you're like, shit, he needs to score, there's pressure on him, he's a point of difference, I've, I've, really, I've really pushed the boat out to select this guy, he better start well. So sometimes it can be really tough for those selections to pan out well. I love him as a prospect. I mean, I I mean, he could be on the halfback flank. I think it's more likely he's on a wing. But he's going to run all day, and <laughs> pun intended, and he's just going to show all the promising signs and the reasons he was drafted so high. Does that mean he averages 82? Does that mean he averages 96? Oh, I don't know. I doubt that he'd average 96, but... Like, where do you guys see him averaging? If I had to guess, I would say mid-80s. But that's probably not enough to select him at that price. So that's what you got to weigh up. Um, but again, he's a bit of a draft option potentially because he's a guy that you can probably get somewhat late in the draft and there is huge upside. And if it doesn't work in draft, well, you just chuck him in the free agency and doesn't matter that much but classic it's a potential um headache selection have you pulling your hair out if it goes wrong if it goes right you're a hero but we well know that these kind of options more often than not lead in headache um end in headache so <laughs> we'll see but if you're picking him let me know Final player we're going to take a look at, and it's a fellow that treated me so well last year. I picked him up in multiple draft leagues quite late, and it was one of the best selections of the year. Um, took his average from 76 to 94, and just found himself so consistent. Like, I remember halfway through the year, people talking about him, do I trade him in? And I kept sort of thinking, oh, probably not. I mean, I, I know he's improved, but... It'd be unlikely that he keeps this good start up, but he did. He just kept going. I mean, look, he almost got better. It's almost like he got good footy at the start of the year and it just showed the coaching staff what he can do and he almost got more opportunity. He went from strength to strength. You know, there were some quieter games here and there. Probably his last month of footy wasn't his best for the year, but um, there's no reason that he can't average mid-90s again. I think he's the type of player that, is important in the midfield because he offers a bit of inside and outside. I think inside mids are almost easier to find, if that makes sense. Like to have players that offer variety and a dynamic difference to your midfield look, they're hard to come by. Players that can start half forward and push up and have an impact in two roles. You know, I think he offers so much. You know, we're talking about Warple, you know, it's sort of like, ah, oh, he's great at what he does, but he's a bit limited. Well, Dylan Moore is not limited. He's got lots of upside, can do it both, um, both ways, and he's probably older than I thought too. So he's waited a while for this opportunity, and, and he really took it with both hands last year. So he's done the apprenticeship, and there's no reason to think he can't back it up. I must admit, I'm a little hesitant to think about selecting him. I think our forward line looks amazing um what is his price you know he's there's so many good options in that forward line your dunkley's you uh you got rosie you got butters you got bloody um who are the other pricks down there there's there's heaps of them you got oh yeah, taranto of course and you know i would have i would have missed another one down there as well like there's there's a lot of options 
um, in the forward line that you could pick on a premium status who have done it for a while will continue to do it with a fair bit of confidence. Um, so, yeah, like if I was a betting man, I'd say, yeah, he'll average between 90 and 95. But at the price, I'm happy to just watch. I'm happy to be like, look, Dill, I might uh, pick you up throughout the year, mate, but you've only done it once. I'm not going to spend 500k on you because I don't know if you'll back it up. I hope you do, mate. I think you will. But until you do, I'm probably just going to hold my chips until I can see it. So, um, yeah, really interesting side this year, Hawthorne. They're going to have a tough year, but they've got a good coach from what I can tell. And a lot of promising youngsters. Super young list, but that can often be a gold mine for us in fantasy land if we get it right. So there won't be too many teams we watch closer through preseason than Hawthorne because the way they make up their side could have some real serious results for the way we include some of their players in our teams. So keep an eye on them. A few good options, no doubt. But let me know your thoughts. If you think I've missed someone or you reckon there's a player I should have touched on, feel free to let me know. But uh, otherwise, let me know who you're selecting and uh, let me know if you have a shower in the dark as well. You know, not being freaky, but just just let me know. Let me know. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go uh, watch the tennis. Have a good night. Cheers.